Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue and welcome to the final video of the Sniper Spaceship build. I'm super excited to be finally finishing this project, this 7 month and 15 videos long journey. So without any further ado, let's get to the video. Okay, so I'll begin by adding some colors to the insides of the wing segments. And I'll do that because I feel like the, the contrast in between the, the inside of the wing segments to, the, uh, to this dark gray arm extension right here, it is too strong. So I'm gonna put an intermediate color right here, an intermediate gray in between those two pieces. And I want to create a nice, interesting, like, uh, mask with some rounded corners right here in the middle. So this is what I was marking with my mechanical pencil. But anyways, without any fancy stuff, just a regular masking tape, I started the masking process. So I'm just creating the basic shapes, the basic uh, square shapes. And now I'm going to work right here on these round corners. And for that, I'm going to use this tool right here, this interesting tool. It looks like a compass, but it actually has uh, like an exacto knife in the tip of it, uh, on the tip of one side. And I'm going to use uh, this tool to create the round corners that I need for the masking. This is a super interesting tool to have if you're into some model making. It really helps with the masking of uh, with the masking process, I guess. So I'm gonna just put this right here on the top of the other pieces of masking tape and now I have my rounded corners. And after a long while of working on the masking, I had the two wings uh, masked and now I can really start painting and adding this uh, intermediate gray color that I want. And to avoid any leakage of paint underneath the masking tape, I did apply like a thin, a uh, first thin coat of, of, of paint, uh, just lots of airflow and not much uh, paint flow uh, on the borders, on the corners, I guess. Then I just removed the masking tape. There was no leaking of paint. I'm super happy with it. Uh, I, of course, I had some issues like I always do. Uh, in this case right here the, the masking tape removed uh, some of the letterings as you guys can see right here. But that's totally okay. It looks like chipping so um, I'm okay with it. But on the top of that intermediate gray color I did some more chipping with some sharp tool as I always do in my models. Now, many of you suggested me to use the, the, the hairspray technique for the chipping and I, I really want to try that. I just couldn't get the time to, to kind of buy the hairspray and try it. And as the, the, the chipping that I make, I'm, I'm super quick with it. I do it all the time. Uh, I'll just use this technique for this model and on the future, I'm going to try the hairspray technique. I promise you guys. But here's another technique that I've never used before and I decided to try, uh, I just had the idea on the spot, I used the, the, the compass, the cutting compass to kind of create a round chipping effect on the paint and I like the, the result. And off camera I've painted the insides of each wing segment in black so that uh, there's not, not much light coming out from that, that division right there. Now here's the thing, I need to paint the, the thrusters, the mini thrusters and these other pieces right here in black and that required like hours and hours of masking and guys I gotta say I hate masking, it is super super time consuming, it is super boring but I did it anyways and now I'm gonna paint it with black uh, and for that I'm gonna use this old airbrush that I had, this double action uh, airbrush, it is a cheap airbrush but it, it does the job uh, I guess just fine and I'm gonna use it to, to paint these pieces. So again, I feel like I repeat myself every single time, but uh, lots of airflow, not much paint flow. And since this is a double action airbrush, uh, I can like uh, 
control the the paint flow better i guess uh yeah so lots of airflow not too much paint i don't wanna and i don't wanna get any leakage of paint on this poorly done masking but yeah this is the end result i'm okay with it uh, i guess the 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 wash effect the wash process will kind of hide my crimes when it comes to bad masking uh, but anyways uh, the wing segments are now in a in a shape that i really like now let's move on to to this piece right here on the beginning of the painting process i've painted it in this really dark gray and i feel this is boring uh, this piece has lots of details from the laser cut pe uh, parts and i feel like i want to make those details to pop so to do that i grabbed this like lighter gray and I'm applying it to the top of the piece uh, with a brush and then I'm gonna create a chipping effect with the alcohol and q-tip uh, again uh, not using the hairspray yet but I promise I will in the future but anyways uh, I feel like the the light gray on this piece really makes the details to to be to be more apparent on the model and I'm happy with it Now, some of you guys remember in the last video that I've shown you guys uh, the uh, 3D printed stencils technique and I'm using that again to, to add some letters to the wing segments. Now, uh, this K letter right there, uh, it is part of a naming system that I'm creating for my models and if you guys want, uh, leave me a comment and I can like make a video about that because uh, that naming system will be used for all of my, my models uh, from the older ones and also for, for, for the future ones but just to give you guys some idea uh, the K ladder would be used for for the combat unit so this is a sniper spaceship a combat unit so it has a K like the combat ro robot would have one if I had this technique before and just as I did before uh, for the chipping effect some alcohol q-tip and some sharp tools and let me quickly show you guys, I do the same technique to this big and complex piece right here, the central arm, which holds the, the, the radar uh, of the spaceship. Uh, I did the chipping on some of the pieces. If you watched my previous video, you remember that I said that I... Uh, I forgot to create a piece for the project and uh, it is this piece right here it goes on the on the back of the of the wings like just a set of, of fins to, to make the back of the wings more interesting so I 3d modeled it and I 3d printed it and now I'm just gonna give it uh, some paint and make it look like interesting for the painting of these pieces nothing too fancy I've I've primed it with a darker primer that I have and just on the tip of the fins I think you guys can see that I've I've created kind of a gradient effect of, uh, going for the black color and as this is not uh, going to have any more details added to it I'm just gonna go ahead and CA glue it to, to the back of the wing segment and yeah this is done Now, uh, I'm happy to say that all of the pieces are ready to be, to, to enter the wash process, I guess. So this is what I'm going to be showing you guys uh, next, the, the wash process. For this wash process, I'm going to be using some oil paints. Now, I like to use oil paints for the wash process because it spreads nicely against the surface of the model. Now, uh, the glossy varnish uh, overall, it doesn't react with the solvent of the oil paint, but I have to be careful. And by that I mean that it can withstand uh, a couple of passes of the oil wash and the, the cleaning process but I can't overdo it because it will ruin the, the glossy varnish and start affecting the, the, the layers underneath and ruining the paint of the model. So I have to be careful and it, it works slowly in this part of the process. Now of course I'm not going to show you guys every single piece being washed, I just have to give you guys the overall idea of this process. 
and the idea right here is to, to put some oil paint some dirt on the on the tiniest spots to kind of uh, make the details of the pieces uh, kind of pop like I did right here as you guys can see there's a difference right here in height and it can be shown better with the oil paints the results of this process is uh, super important for the overall look of the model and uh, when you're doing it you kind of you kind of can't see uh, immediately what happens but if you take like two pieces one that hasn't been washed you can really see so right here i have the left one without the wash and the right one with the wash uh, already and you guys can see that the the deeper spots of the piece they kind of they, they get they get deeper and the details pop so it is super important to do a nice wash now after a while i had all of the smaller pieces of the project with the with the wash done i take I, I decided to take care of the smaller ones first and then i'll tackle the big boys right there after the wash is dry i can apply the final coat of matte varnish to each of the pieces and here's an example of a piece with the final matte varnish coat and if i'm being 100 percent honest with you guys i'm not super satisfied with this varnish i think it does the colors too much for my taste of course in comparison with the glossy varnish as you guys can see right here on the barrel uh, the glossy varnish kind of makes the model look more like a toy so I don't like it even for the metal colors and I prefer the matte varnish even though I'm not 100% satisfied with it uh, but a good thing about the matte varnish is that it made the green accent color to finally reach the color that I've, I've imagined for this model from the beginning And so here are all of the pieces of the project with the paint, the weathering and also with the final coat of matte varnish. Now this project is still not finished, I still have to make one extra step right here. And the older subscribers of this channel know that I have to add the final details, that being the wires and the other metal pieces but so far i really like the paint job and i'm satisfied with it now moving on to to adding the the, the final details like the wires i grabbed my collection of different wires from salvage electronics and now i just have to to put the wires through the holes that i've left myself in the build process now when i'm making the model when i'm at the uh the build process i'm not necessarily uh, really thinking about where each and every wire will go but i'm always lefting myself some holes and some opportunities to 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 kind of put the wire through so in this part of the process i'm kind of improvising i'm kind of just trying to connect the pieces together and put the wires where i feel like it makes sense in this part of the process i'm also looking for opportunities to put some metal details like this one right here in the mini thrusters and also these breast tubes right here which connects the wing segments so for instance this one i had this idea in the middle of the build process so i was expecting to use it but for other parts like this one right here the secondary radar system of the, the spaceship uh, by accident i discovered that the metal tubes that i had uh, fit perfectly on the tip of it so yeah this is a part of the process that I, I have to to look for opportunities to put stuff now sometimes I forget to leave myself the holes that I need to put the wires through like this one right here so I just have to be uh, super careful and create those holes even after the final coat of matte varnish so in this case I want to put some wires through the metal uh, breast tubes right there and I need those wires to come uh, from the inside of the wing segment. So I started with a drill bit in my power drill. I made that uh, hole bigger with my own hands and now I can fit those uh, beautiful tiny metal pieces right here on that hole with a drop of CA glue and from that metal pieces uh, some wires will come through. you <laughs> 
so yeah i know this is super risky to make this late on the build uh, but i feel like the the end result is super interesting and it helps to to better tell the scale of the spaceship I've also added some wires to the radar system of the spaceship as you guys can see right here and I've also added the wires on the sniper itself and as you guys can see right here I've added these tiny metal nuts uh, to the electric motor that controls the, the shell crusher and as a last step I decided to try to create a burnt effect to the metal wings from the from the thrusters array as you guys can see right here uh, on the shot and yeah now the sniper spaceship is finally complete The sniper spaceship is finally finished and I gotta be honest with you guys I never thought this was going to take me seven months of full-time work but the end result made it all worth it I'm super happy with how it looks and I really feel like this is a step up uh, for my uh, scratch building skills now I want to be honest with you guys I'm also super excited to move on and start my next project and on the next video I'm gonna share with you guys some details about that I'm also thinking about making a Q&A for this project so leave me a comment with a question if you want that also right here I gotta make a quick shout out for all my patreon and coffee supporters this was only possible because of you guys so thank you so much for your help and for your support if you want to join them and help me keep going and keep making the videos the link to those is on the description box below but yeah this is it for now thanks for joining me on this journey and as always thanks for watching